What's up guys? Uh, it's been a pretty crazy day for me uh, today outside of YouTube, but uh, inside of YouTube as well, there's going to be some pretty exciting announcements that I will be making aside from these Dana White's Contender Series fighters. I've got an affiliate link now with the company and I will be talking about that probably over the next couple of days when it's all sorted out. And I will be providing written content for a website and I think that you could probably see my first article being written up within the next few days. So I feel like that's pretty exciting. But moving on, man, this video is going to be about the Dana White's Contender Series fights and fighters that have been most recently announced since my last video. I have actually compiled Dana White's Contender Series 2022 all into one playlist. So now it actually all makes sense and it's not kind of all over the place in four different playlists like it was originally. Now you can find all my Dana White's Contender Series 2022 content in one place. Moving on, man, we've got Dana White, uh, sorry, Dan Suzart, who is 9-1, and one, and he's going to be fighting Waldo Cortez Acosta on Dana White's Contender Series, and I feel like I predicted this, I predicted that this fight was going to happen, well, one of the fighters was going to happen, because I, I told everyone, man, in LFA 129, the winner of Thomas Peterson versus Waldo Cortez Acosta was going to be fighting on Dana White's Contender Series, or just get signed to the UFC. Very interesting fight. I feel like both guys are very good prospects, and um, it's going to be a great one. The UFC needs heavyweights. Whoever wins that fight is definitely going to get signed. But I think it's uh, about time that I shout out my source for this information. Sean Bitter. Sean Bitter has also been the source for most of my previous uh, videos as well, and he is the source for the current fighters. First one, Connor Matthews, 5-0, and but uh, to be honest... A dicey 5-0, and like a 5-0 and against literally all losing um, all losing records except for his win over Joshua Mara, who is 2-1, and one, and that is his best win, which um, isn't really the best look going into Dana White's Contender Series, but what is most exciting for about Conor Matthews is just the way that he's uh, defeating everyone. He did go 4-2 and two as an amateur, so he's got uh, some experience there, but every single win so far has been taking um, place in about 2 minutes or less. Which is pretty insane for Conor Matthews. So yeah, he's 5-0. and Yeah, he hasn't fought great competition. But what he has done is beat um, not so great competition very quickly. In fact, he's got a win over Jay Ollis. So I think actually has um, over 100 losses right now. So good for Jay. Moving up, we've got George Chokos who actually had a run in Bellator. In case you guys don't know, he's 7-2 and right now in the light heavyweight division. Just like the flyweight division and the heavyweight division, the UFC does need more light heavyweights. Their uh, division is pretty stale right now. And I feel like, you know what, George Chokos would be a good... Um, addition to it. He had a bad run in Bellator. He lost twice to Kevin Fry and Ty Guerrero. But since then, he has actually bounced back to some pretty good uh, opponents, especially Ty Flores, who was a decent prospect himself. And he beat Ty Flores, and I think is a pretty decent underdog in his most recent fight. And that's probably what put him on the uh, on the map to, uh, to to be on Dana White's Contender Series. So good for um, good for George Tokos. I feel like he's definitely someone to look out for in the light heavyweight division if he's able to get a win on Dana White's Contender Series. Denise Gomez, we've got a female fighter here in the female flyweight division, which is interesting because I, th I think there's actually quite a few female flyweights um, at the moment. I think it's female bantamweights they really need. But Denise Gomez does have some pretty good wins. When she w she lost her debut to a girl that was much more experienced than her at 6-3. and three. But since then, she has beaten a couple of decent competition, such as a few girls uh, that were 3-0. and oh. Actually, she fought three girls in a row that were 3-0. and oh. And then uh, beat um, a more experienced opponent, Milena Dudeva, uh, on Invicta FC. And now she's going to be getting the shot in Dana White's Contender Series. Speaking of another female in Dana White's Contender Series, we've got Sandra Lovato, who is 10-2, also fighting at flyweight. Potentially could see these two matched up against each other. And what's so interesting to me about Sandra Lovato is both of her losses come to the same person. The first loss was a, a unanimous decision loss when she was 5-0 and to, a, to a Carla Elizabeth when she was 1-0. And then, a few fights later, she was 7-1, and one, decided to avenge that loss, and then she lost again to Carla Elizabeth, who actually potentially could be fighting on Dana White's Contender Series sometime soon, potentially next year, because she is 5-0 and at the moment. Her last win actually only coming in 2019, so a long time ago, maybe she's decided not to fight anymore. She's 24, moving on, that's not who we're talking about. Since then, she's gone on a three-fight win streak, and she is a pretty experienced for a female flyweight coming into Dana White's Contender Series. So I feel like Sandra Lovato... Could potentially be someone to look out for. She's only 27 as well. Carolina Wojcik, uh, I think is her name, or, or Wojcik uh, um, is uh, the next one here. She's actually on a little bit of a win streak right now. Her one loss most recently coming to Awelina Woz uh, Wozniak, Wozniak, um, who actually, I think, recently competed against some pretty high-level competition herself. And um, Maria Silva, who, who who's coming off Dana White's Contender Series, and she won. 
but she didn't get the contract. Cheyenne Velismas as well. You guys probably knew her as Cheyenne Bays, but she decided to che cheat on her uh, on her husband JP, and now she's Cheyenne Velismas. Uh, Roman Delidze is in that triangle somewhere, but that's not what we're talking about. We're here to talk about Dana, Dana White's contender series. She lost to Cheyenne Velismas, who is a UFC fighter at the moment. She lost to Amelia Awilina Wozniak, who's a pretty good fighter herself. And uh, since then, she has actually beaten some pretty good competition, 3-1, 9-5, and 5-2, and five and five and um, by decision, all three by decision, so I'm expecting this fight will probably go the distance, like most of her wins actually have. But she actually does seem kind of scary, to be honest, so uh, good for her. Eduardo Neves, now this is a heavyweight prospect I feel like I can personally get behind, like, in excitement. This guy's 22 years old, he's only a few years older than me. In fact, he's only like two, year, two and a half years older than me, he's 22 years old. Very young for a heavyweight, and I feel like if he wins, the UFC are going to build this guy up because this guy potentially um, could be a pretty big like problem in the UFC heavyweight division in like five years' time because he's so young and he's already got a 5-0 and professional record. All of his wins have uh, won by KO or TKO. He's on a three-fight first-round KO streak with most of those wins, or two, two out of three of those wins coming in the first minute, the other one minute and four. Crazy. In my opinion, he won on LFA 126. I don't think I talked about this card, but he was the slight favorite to win that card, to win that fight. And he's only like 22 years old, man. I feel like this is going to be a very exciting prospect to look out for in the heavyweight division. UFC needs heavyweights. The UFC needs young heavyweights. If Eduardo Neves wins, no matter how he wins, he probably will get signed. And um, yeah, that's kind of it for the whole video, man. I only talked about one, two, three, four, five, six new prospects, and then one new fight. But I still feel like it's still enough to warrant a video. We've had a little bit of news recently. As for the written content, I'm probably going to be talking about Road to UFC on a website. I'll be talking about that website when I get my um, written content out there first. And uh, yeah, let's just get um, to the end of the video. And I'll talk about something else in the next one tomorrow. I don't really know what I'll talk about. Maybe UFC 274 because I'm very hyped up for UFC 274. But at least not waste the time. We're at 7 minutes already. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Thanks for sticking around to the end. If you have, leave a comment uh, and a like on the video, please.